In 2006, Museum of London Archaeology excavated an area of the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel. What they found was both extraordinary and unexpected. And we're here today at the Museum of London to find out more and reveal just the beginning of that story. So Natasha, it's true then that for 300 years, prior to the Anatomy Act of 1832, the only legal source of getting corpses was from criminals who had been executed and then publicly dissected. Well, what we have here is one of a number of skeletons that were excavated by Mola in 2006 from a site to the back of the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel. What's really fascinating about it is the fact that this is brand new research. This is a site that we didn't know was going to be there in the form that we found it. What's amazing about them is that we have hundreds of individuals, many of whom have got signs that they've either had autopsies or that they've been dissected. So they show us what was being used instead of the legal sources. Oh, fantastic. So why was there this need and increase for more bodies? Well, during the early 19th century, there's a huge number of medical schools in, in London, both private schools, and as the century progresses, there are more and more teachings going on in hospitals, and there simply aren't enough anatomised criminals to supply the demand that's created by the number of students. So corpses are sourced from lots of different places, um, and there's a the kind of rise in the popular fear about body snatching as a result of this. And some places, including the London Hospital, seem to have sourced from their own wards. But the hospital itself, though, was actually a hospital that you went in to be treated. It wasn't that you, you were going in and you were just then going to be used at the end for no, dissection. No, definitely. And, um, in fact, the surgeons and doctors at the hospital, many of them made it very clear that, that the dissection was so that you could treat your living patients better. Is this an example that we can actually see here in, in the skeleton? Yes, we have several things here. What we have here is... a. Uh, person who's undergone a craniotomy yeah. it's the top of their skull's been removed so that you could look at the structures of the brain which is part of your fairly standardized autopsy so that may have been carried out on somebody just to work out why they died yeah you can see where they've sawn round and you've got stop start uh, sawing well, yes, yeah. and then they've levered it off and oh, it's I left see, and then it, it just sort of snaps yeah wow <laughs> and you can see the little marks there as well yeah you? You probably where they've levered things what we've got here is a bit more intriguing because we've got part of a leg that has been sawn. The, yeah, that's the cut. You can see it's very, very smooth and very, very level. This is the ankle end of a, of a tibia. So mm -hmm. this is probably somebody practicing for surgery. We know that they're not just carrying out autopsies, that they are actually dissecting some of these people because right. we have people, we have human remains that have been sectioned. So you'll have an arm and a shoulder that have been sawn through. So you've got part of part a person. Of it, right. And we've also got things like this, which is oh, wow. a it's wired amazing. section of vertebra. And, and we've got copper wire and we've got iron pins in there. Gosh, that's amazing. So this then is articulating it as you would have a skeleton so that you can then use that for teaching. Yeah. You can see how it all fits together. Presumably so, yeah. So this is out of one of the graves. Any human remains that weren't needed anymore were disposed of in coffins, in graves. So they were buried as you would bury then a normal individual in, yeah, a, little in more a single, jumbled up, but so. yeah, <laughs> many more parts. Yeah. And so all of those then would have been implements that they then would have used for long-term teaching, to aid in learning, to, to yeah. help with techniques. Well, s some of the samples may have been stored for quite a long time before they're no longer required. Also, students would have had to practice preparing some things. and. Some of the specimens that were taken at the time will still be in jars in museums. <laughs> right, so still very pertinent today, you're still using these things, you still need still to have a for knowledge teaching. for doing that, yeah. So it's still very relevant. So going back then to the hospitals and uh, body snatching and how bodies are being um, acquired, who really was the most vulnerable? Well, in the case of the London Hospital, the poor tend to be the more vulnerable people um, in general to uh, resurrectionists and body snatchers. The people we're seeing are the unclaimed patients, the people who were too poor or didn't have any relatives who wanted to come back and claim them and pay for a burial. And interestingly, of course, the resurrection men themselves don't tend to be from the upper classes. Um, but they could make a lot of money out of this business. At the London Hospital, one of the 
most notorious body snatching cases starts there when a man called William Millard is arrested in the grounds um, apparently with the intention of raising a body. He was carrying a sack and he's an interesting man because he starts off on the legitimate side of the business working as the superintendent of St Thomas's dissecting room um, and at some point um, he ends up on the other side of, of um, the business and unfortunately he um, dies in prison and yeah. his wife Anne then sets about trying to clear his name and she writes this fantastic pamphlet where she um, exposes all the practices that she says are going on in the hospital and the nice thing about the archaeological site is that it, it confirms some of what she was saying. The human remains that we've excavated they date from about 1820 to 1841 so that's really very key then, because then that's actually the pivotal point for the Anatomy Act of 1832. Yes. And so if we think about things as well, there's a, there's a resonance then for the past and to today, and um, medical uh, ethics and issues around dissection and having bodies to be able to dissect. So these are questions that are still sort of asked. And not a lot really changed, did it? I don't think, until there was the Alderhay inquiry, where then there was um, changes to the Act, which brought about the Human Tissue Act of 2004, mm -hmm. then uh, raises questions and debates about bodies, donation of bodies and acquiring bodies. So, very, very important time. Exactly, and the question still remains, who owns your body?